Well, yeah, it's mitten on. If someone told you you could have a under three pound belt wearable submachine gun, you'd think they were insane. But the Czechoslovakians managed it with the VZ61, which is currently being worn in this nice bit of uh, pigskin on my hip here. Now, uh, Ian recently did a very interesting pair of videos on a full auto one when he was up in Canada with Master, and uh, thanks very much Ian for giving me permission to insert some of your footage to illustrate some of the points I'm going to make. Now, I got this one. It was a horror bag. It would not run at all. Uh, it now, touch wood, runs. So we're going to do some shooting with it today and then in a second video on this topic I'm going to take you inside it, show you the differences with the full auto ones and what I had to do to make it run. It involved square miles of 1200 grit sandpaper. Let's just uh, not beat about the bush here. Now these were made in the communist period in Czechoslovakia by CZ. They are now made by Czech small arms who are not related to CZ, they're not even in the same town. They seem to have bought the tooling for these and also for the VZ-58 assault rifles and they're making them both as semi-autos for the, uh, the civilian market. So, so the military ones were made in 32 ACP, like this one, 380 auto, 9 Makarov and also a very small number in 9 para, but I bet that was a little lively because it's not very heavy. Uh, CSA are making them in 22 rimfire, 32 ACP, 380 Auto, and 9 Makarov, uh, not 9 Para. And uh, qualitatively, yeah, they don't seem to be quite the same product, but that's not for today. Now, what I find interesting from a sort of engineering perspective with this design is it's neither one thing nor the other. I mean, this, this design dates from the late 50s. It was introduced in 1961, hence VZ61. Uh, according to the... Uh, Czech terminology, it is a machine pistol. I think it deserves the title machine pistol. It's really, it works as a pistol, and they sell these in the States without the stock as a pistol. In full auto, it is controllable um, as a pistol or with the, uh, with the shoulder stock deployed. I had the opportunity without cameras present to shoot one full auto, and I can confirm it is a complete sweetheart and far, far more controllable than a Glock 18C. Now, um, what we're going to look at today, mostly, is this as a pistol versus as a carbine. Now, to get it down to this weight and make it belt wearable, there are certain compromises in the design, notably in terms of the, uh, the, uh, the shoulder stock. Now, this basically folds into the outline of the gun, if we include the bracket for it, so that it fits in a holster. And the idea was for tank crews, uh, NCOs, private soldiers who who don't have a rifle due to their role, and certainly, yeah, it's not going to be as capable as a proper submachine gun or a or a short assault rifle. But you're more likely to have it with you when you're bailing out of a vehicle than if you've got to stop and grab something from 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 a clip in the vehicle. It's it's on your hip, or they made shoulder holsters for these as well. Um, so yeah, it's. An awful lot of firepower in not very much belt space. I mean, they were issued with a 10 rounder that fit in the holster and then a pair of 20 rounders in a, uh, in a, a little pigskin pouch on the side. That's certainly enough to bail out and uh, get people to stay the heck away from you while you run away because, uh, yeah, all you've got is a 32 ACP machine pistol. So, uh, what we're going to do is shoot it at 25 meters offhand as a pistol on one target, give it 10 rounds in a reasonable time frame, and then as a carbine, and you'll see the ergonomic compromises made for the, uh, for, the, for the carbine stock, and we'll see what the difference on target is. Now the sights are set for um, 75 meters or 150 meters, and uh, this, this might seem a bit odd, but I ran the ballistics on it, and with the 75 meter setting, you're back to 100 meters, never being more than 15 centimeters, six inches above or below point of aim. And then from 100 back to 150, you're never more than about a foot either way. But it's when, when the front sight's like there, are you really gonna be able to use that accuracy? But what we're gonna do is a couple of 10 round groups and uh, see what happens. So I will need these.
First is a pistol. This was not that smooth and didn't make that sound before I fixed it. So, aim in the middle. Now it hooks back, so we can uh, lose that one. It runs! Now, try again from the shoulder stock. Now, the best way to hold this is to grip around the magazine like that and put your thumb on the takedown pin. You want to keep it away from them. I guess you could hold it like that, but I find that to be a bit more logical. And you can get a sort of cheek weld if you go, or chin weld, more to the point. Ah, ah, failure to eject. Bolt needs quite a lot of velocity to eject now. I spoke too soon when I said it runs. More polishing required, I think. Only the one jam. Targets, please. So this one here was shot as a pistol. That's not a bad group, including the uh, well from 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 the the two furthest apart. That's sort of the order of six inches, and then shot as a carbine. A little bit more. the The issue with it as a carbine is that the front sight is incredibly close to your eyes. Um, when you've got it out at arm's length. You can focus on it, focus on the front sight quite well as normal, but um, when it's that close to your eye, you focus on it and then you can't see the target really, and you're sort of lining up in the middle. But I'm actually kind of pleased with both of them. Um, they wouldn't be competition winning scores, but I was shooting faster than I would have been doing in a competition. So uh, yeah, point of impact is a bit different as you'd expect because as the bullet accelerates down the barrel, it's doing different things if it's held like that or held out at arm's length. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, not a lot to say about that. A couple of other handling points is that there's an oddity in that when the uh, when the safety catch is on, it causes the uh, the bolt hold open to come up, and that blocks the bolt in either position. If I hook it back, we then can't release it. It's uh, it's fixed. Now, as I mentioned, what I like about this was it was designed from the ground up for this role to be holster carried. Um, most other attempts to do something similar are either simply sticking a shoulder stock on a pistol or a revolver or scaling down or shortening a submachine gun think mini Uzi, micro Uzi, that kind of thing. Now we just happen to have an MP5K PDW here, which is a very different beast. And uh, we're deciding whether we were gonna have the stock on it or not, but uh, at least to start with, we're stock on for the minute. So what I'm gonna do is repeat the exercise with this rather larger beast and see how that goes. How do you even?
Me to eat more pies. I think I'm just going to stop that at three because that is not usable as a as a pistol. The typical HK controls that are just, just outside of easy reach. Right, let's have a look. So as a pistol, I just it was just pointless. It's it's too it's too big. It's too heavy. It's really high. I mean, it it works nominally, but no. That's better than the Scorpion, but then it is significantly larger and much more ergonomic. Um, particularly with the stock unfolded. A very different beast, and that shows the effect on target. But if I had to carry something in a holster, it would have to be that one. Now, of course, originally, they didn't have the folding PDW stock, so uh, let's go back to basics, have it on the sling, and see what we can do with that. Right, let's have a look. Well, I know I mashed the trigger on that one, so we can probably discount that, and that's uh, down to about a four inch group. So uh, I think that uh, that is probably the way to fire this one. So because so we've got the opportunity on the range here, we're gonna do a 10 meter El Presidente without a turn for safety reasons, because I don't want to be pointing the wrong way. So we're gonna try it. Try it first. Holster open. This is a bit stiff still. Oh, can I get it closed? Mag pouch open there. Are you ready? Stand by. Well, that has to be one of the least impressive El Presidentes I've ever shot. That was pretty bad. Should we go have a look? Time was? 15.48. Hey! Four hits, three hits, four hits. Ha, <laughs> that's kind of laughable. Sorry about that. Right, well, that holster sucks, so let's, uh, Let's try it with a uh, start from a from the ready position. See if that does any better. It's quite clear. It's very it's very sit up and beg. It's like a Dutch bicycle. Uh, you're not. I mean, I'm a revolver shooter. I want to have. I, I I want to point it down there. But, uh, let's see if we do better from a ready position. Are you ready? Stand by. Well, if it were bloody run. <laughs> Time was? <laughs> Hold along. 
Well, I think we can ignore the time, but hits wise, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Another failure to fully eject. It's, it's very bolt velocity sensitive. So, uh, yes. Hopefully when it's run in and I've done a bit more polishing on it, it will run better. But uh, let us now try it with the shoulder stock. See if that makes a difference, provided it doesn't jam. Okay, so as a carbine, forgetting that the safety catch has to be off. It's really odd that you can't cycle the bolt with the safety catch applied. So, let's see how badly this goes. Are you ready? Stand by. Time? 10.80. Fastest. It didn't jam though. Let's go have a look. So we've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's better than it felt. Um, part of the issue is because of that squirrely ergonomics that's going on there, it doesn't come up naturally. And I was kind of point shooting it rather than finding the sights because it's, it's not quite, natural um yeah i mean compromise between a pistol and a carbine is something you can carry i think but uh in any case that was fun and because we couldn't not do the comparison are you ready stand by Right, I didn't see the sights through half of that. <laughs> ah. Time? 10.35. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I think with some practice with that technique, you could get really good, really good. I mean, this is the first time I've ever shot like that today. I never really thought about it before, uh, but yeah, it's a compromise for something this big and heavy without actually putting a shoulder stock on it. I think that's actually, uh, that's all right as a first go. I'm uh, fairly happy with that. So I hope that was at least vaguely interesting. I certainly had a lot of fun making it. Uh, thanks very much to Matt of AATS for not only hosting us here at the range, but also for loaning us the uh, lovely little MP5K here. First, my first time on one of these, and I'm very uh, grateful for the experience. Um, as I said, next time uh, on this topic, we're going to go through the insides of the civilian CSA Visa 61, show you what's uh, different with it. And uh, yeah, please like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Please consider supporting us on Patreon and uh, see you again sometime. Bye.